Hi hey guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, uh, episode 416, but the uh, cool thing about it is this is actually the 10th year anniversary, anniversary of the show. I've been doing Matt Chat now for over a decade. A little bit scary, but at the same time, it's a, a big landmark, and I wanted to find uh, something appropriate uh, for the 10th year anniversary special. And what I came up with was a uh, a return to uh, the game that I looked at in my very first episode of Matt Chat, which is uh, this one right here, one of my all-time favorite uh, computer role-playing games. It's really the game uh, that turned me from sort of a casual gamer, uh, just a regular you know, <laughs> guy who liked video games, uh, into something uh, mildly obsessional. You know, this became uh, the real passion of mine, computer role-playing games, and this was the one that really uh, got the ball started. I remember this, getting this from my, uh, I think it was my either birthday or Christmas, and my uh, grandmother got it for me. She wouldn't let me play the game before Christmas, uh, but she did say, I talked her into uh, letting me read the manual <laughs> so, so that on the day I could not have to read the instructions but just jump straight into uh, gaming. Uh, so imagine that. You know, you're a kid, uh, you just can't wait to play this thing, uh, you don't really know what it's going to be like. You're just reading the manual and, <laughs> and, and sort of imagining it. And then finally, of course, uh, getting to play. But uh, before we get into the gameplay, I thought I would show you some of the materials here. This is, the, this is not my original copy. It's one that I believe that uh, maybe my, my good friend Al might have sent me this. Uh, but just, you know, if you ever do want to play the game, uh, you can play it on GOG and get this stuff in digital format. But here's what the printed version looks like. I don't know how well this is going to show up, but uh, just a couple of nice uh, thin booklets. Uh, then we've got, of course, the uh, <laughs> infamous code wheel. And this one's in pretty good shape. Uh, the one I had, this little pin, uh, a little thing holding it together came apart. And I had to uh, make my own. And it's kind of cool, too. The, whoever owned this uh, made a lot of notes, just like I would have done. Uh, they got all their characters here, codes and things. That's always uh, fun, and I think this is the PC version. Uh, now I played the, I played it originally on the, uh, on the, uh, the the Commodore 64 computer, which I have a Commodore <laughs> uh, sitting up there. Uh, so it's a little bit of a different animal, but I was actually surprised at how much this uh, PC version. You know, I was kind of assuming the DOS version would have been uh, way better. Now, honestly, I think I probably should have played the Amiga version. Uh, for this video. So maybe I'll do, look at that at some point. <laughs> maybe 10 years from now, I'll, I'll look at the Amiga version. Because uh, I really feel like the DOS version is uh, it's, its a lot more like the 60 <laughs> Commodore version than it probably had to be, if you catch my drift. Uh, but anyway, uh, I had a lot of fun with it. I played maybe about an hour and some change. Uh, so <laughs> I get the party made, get into uh, get into the uh, uh, the slums a little bit, show you some of the combat. Uh, basically, just has has some fun with the game. Uh, so anyway, I'll, I'll just uh, I'll let you look at this for now. Let me know what you think. If you want me to continue uh, playing some more, I could certainly love to do that. Uh, but anyway, uh, without further ado, here is Pool of Radiance. All right, here we go. <laughs> SSI presents official Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. <laughs> oh, disappeared all of you. Pool of Radiance, a Forgotten Realms, fantasy role-playing epic volume one. Man, they must assume you are a speed reader from hell. I got Jim Ward there. Uh, scenarios, uh, David Cook, Steve Winter, Mike uh, Brault. Oh, and here we go. <laughs> ah, ye famous translation wheel. I forgot about this. Yes, we will need to locate the, uh, uh, the code wheel. I assume they've got it here on my... In my part of my uh, GOG package, let me look in the uh, manual here. Yeah, code, oh, code will executable file. Oh, well, that's interesting. I guess they've really gone all out. Good old GOG. Let me show you this. <laughs> I think you get a kick out of what they've done here. Let me see if I can add that little source. Boom! <laughs> I love this program. <laughs> Man, I you know I played this game so much as a kid. My the little uh, uh, metal pin or whatever 
little snap thing that held the wheels together <laughs> fell apart on me. <laughs> uh, so I had to kind of very carefully uh, manually do that. Uh, so that was a, a danger back then. Okay, let's see if I can do this pattern recognition. <laughs> What's that symbol? <laughs> Uh, what is that one? Uh, which one is it? Oh my god, it's even tough like this. I think that's it. Boom. Okay, with the Deathic Rune. Which one is that? Is that is that? that? <laughs> Goonga! Google! Oh, it's Google. Savior! Alright, let's see if we've got the right code. <laughs> ah! Mystery solved. I'll keep, I'll keep this uh, wheel handy just in case I need it later, but I will uh, go ahead and remove that so we can see the beautiful screen. <laughs> okay. Man, I'm having fun already. Haven't even gotten into the game yet. So you create new character, add character to party, load, save game. You know, I did play this on the Commodore 64. That was my platform of choice. It's also the the computer that this game was built on and for. Uh, let me see. But I'm playing on the uh, the PC version. At least in theory. <laughs> Why is that not moving? Uh, what do I have to select the name? First letter? What is this? Uh, I wonder how they've got this. How do I move it down? <laughs> oh no! There we go. Just Well, enter works, but Let's see, create new character. There's got to be some way to scroll that down. How do you... It's not the arrow keys. Tab, maybe? Nope. Shift. All right, we'll just do the... Whoa! Crap. <laughs> okay, what was that? So, E exits. Oh, my God! How do you... How do I move it down? <laughs> oh, no! I guess I'll have to look at the manual. Wow. A quick reference card. Uh, move combat. 3D move. Uh, da, da, da. It's like 7, 8, 9. It's like the number keys. Wow. It's quite, I didn't realize this was that old of a game. There we go. Yeah, it's, it's like 9... Seven moves up. <laughs> Seven. How do I move back down? Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> One and seven. I'm going to have to... There we go. Now suddenly the... This is just weird. I might have to do some key... Re, uh, do the keys on this. This is just absurd. Okay, let's see. Mail... This is my dwarf. I think I'll make my tank character. So we got straight up fighter, thief, and a fighter thief. And this one, if, if I recall correctly, there are certain limitations on these classes. I mean, on these races, uh, some of them won't be able to get all the way to the to the end, uh, especially if you go on uh, throughout the whole series. So let's make our dwarf. Uh, let's see, lawful good, <laughs> lawful neutral. Uh, lawful evil. I think I read somewhere where most of us are <laughs> lawful evil. <laughs> if, you, if you really think about it. I'll go, go ahead and go lawful good for this dwarf. And that does not look like a dwarf. <laughs> Looks like some kind of 80s uh, fitness icon. You're going to see this guy doing some some jumping jacks or something. Uh, let's see. Can I change? I guess these are just random. So he's got a 17th strength. Intelligence at 13, Wisdom 14, Dexterity 16, Constitution 14. That's a little bit low, that 14 there, I'm thinking, for a tank. So, you know, you could just say, well, to heck with it, I'll, I'll just play with that. Uh, or you could just sit here and just keep rolling and rolling and <laughs> hopefully you get... I'm trying to land an 18 in Strength and Con. Uh, that would be ideal, but at least over... Let's see if I can get to elite. Oh, there's a nice strength score. So he's a, basically Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> but the Constitution's low. Let's keep going. Come on. Come on. 
<laughs> I you just wish you could go in there and type in the numbers. So this is probably about as good as I can get without just getting obsessional uh, at this point. So yes, we'll keep this character. Character name. Uh, why don't we call him Ufgar? This name of my dwarf I've been playing in my regular D&D &D campaign. Okay, so we can change up the head. <laughs> hey, my name is Peter. Whoa. Yeah, so I think these are pretty much the same heads that's on the Commodore version. For some reason, I was thinking the graphics have been in <laughs> wow. enhanced. Oh, this is just... <laughs> you know how you remember things in your mind? Just, you know, I don't remember it looking this cheesy. Ah, oh, see, that's... There we go. <laughs> that looks kind of like a, a fighter. Looks more like a cleric. Let's see, can I find one that... Is just, <laughs> I know what you're thinking. I'm not even going to say it. I'm, I'm beyond that. I guess that's about as good as I'm going to get for a tank. Okay, let's keep him. Now we get to change up the... Uh, Let's see, parts, color, size. Let's see, what does parts do? Head and weapon. Let's see, what do we got there? A bow, axe, a sort of a morning star looking thing. This is really, really small. It's hard for me to see what's going on, but surely they got the uh, a sword and a shield. There we go, that'll work. Okay, keep that. I'm okay with the head, I suppose. See, so size should be uh, small. Some way to change that. Large, out of the way. <laughs> there we go, small. Did that actually do anything? How do I. Man, this is just terrible the way they got these keys set up. I don't. Changing it somehow there. I don't... There we go. I guess it is better like that. Okay, it was already small. Okay, colors, I'll just leave it. It's just like, okay, so we want to kind of remember he's green with blue trousers. And that's the first one. I think we get to do that a good uh, <laughs> five or six more times. Go ahead and add him to the party. Yes, yes. So there's our first character. Uh, now I'm going to just uh, quickly make these other ones. And there's a little way to cheat. <laughs> uh, but we won't do that. Let's just play this one totally le legit. Uh, so I've got Ufgar. I think I would like to have another fighter in the party. Let's see what we've got. <clears throat> Dwarf, Elf, Gnome, uh, Half-Elf, Halfling, Human. Why don't we do a, an elf? Oh, what happened there? Uh, make him a uh, male again. So you see they get lots more hybrid options here. Fighters, magic users, thief. Uh, usually, back when I was a kid, I'd always pick some of these crazy ones. But you have to divvy up your experience so much. It's kind of a trade-off there. Let's go ahead and take the fighter again. Lawful good again. Oh man, I'm just <laughs> not digging this. What is that, like Garfunkel? Uh, for some reason, I'm thinking like 70s uh, folk singer look. <laughs> Get this character. Oh no, we don't want. Now I'd like to have a like a, a ranger type, so I want to give this guy a bow. So I I don't want too low of a strength. Oh, that would be nice. Uh, that's got a nice. Uh, Dexterity and strength. Constitution's just really low. You don't want a front row. Now that's pretty good. Look at that. Pretty much 15s and above for everything. So I'll go ahead and take that. Not the strongest, but you know, a few points. Let's see, what do you name an elf? Ranger kind of character. I guess I'll name him. Uh, let's go ahead and call him... Uh, Trying to think of a good elf name. <laughs> I kind of want to go Elrond. That's a little bit cheesy. 
It's going to bring up my elf name generator. I didn't have this back in the day. Uh, Reptar, Druindar, Mythanar. You know, Mythanar sounds pretty cool. I think I'll try that. Mythanar. Mythanar. Uh, let's see. I might have to go with that head because I don't think I'm going to get much better. <laughs> Uh, that looks a little bit more like what I was picturing. Okay. You know, I'm not even sure how many characters you get in the party. Uh, let's see, does it tell me here? Just looking at the quick commands. Uh, I need to see a screenshot, maybe. No want to create a character I can't even use. Uh, they do have all the manual manuals, and I think there's... Yeah, it even includes the clue book, which is really nice. That clue book is <laughs> really essential if you don't want to make your own maps. Let's see, how many characters are in the party? Uh, da, 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 da. Cleric, character class, lawful good. Oh, well, I'll go ahead and read this to you. <laughs> lawful good. <laughs> Here, you want to take a look at the manual? I can uh, show that to you while we're... Messing, messing with it here. Well, that's going to be a little bit hard to see. Let me blow this up. It's the lawful good. Followers of this, of this alignment strictly interpret law and order, but they use these principles to bring all the benefits to the society. So I think that's the classic goody-goody. The lawful evil is one that they I've heard of most people are in real life. It says, followers of this alignment believe in the rulership of the strong and the enslavement of the weak. You know, I don't think that's... <laughs> that doesn't fit me. <coughs> uh, neutral good. Uh, true neutral, blah, blah, blah. I just want to see. Yeah, you may have up to six characters in your party at a time. You can control up to eight, but the remaining two slots are left open for NPCs your characters may hire or meet. And let's see what else they say. Yeah, see, gender in this game has an impact. Gender affects the possible strength of a character and what sort of portraits you will have to choose from to represent the character. <laughs> Whoops, they messed that part up. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it does make the women characters weaker in terms of strength. So I guess I probably wouldn't fly anymore these days, right? Anything other? Well, I got this up. Uh, it doesn't look like it, so go ahead and close that back down. Okay, back to this. Uh, yeah, so he's they got him tall already, which is nice. Let's go ahead and change up the colors a little bit, though. Uh, first, let's see about a weapon. Yeah, that looks good for him. All right, keep that. Uh, head. You'd probably be looking at this more than you will the... Uh, <laughs> uh, more than you would the uh, whoa that looks kind of cool you'd be looking at this a lot more than you will the portrait I mean really you probably won't even look at that portrait all that often anyway so if you want to put some time into making him look good this is the screen you want to uh, focus on still trying to figure out this bizarro key system it's not changing up his arm very much. Let's see. It must be shield, arm, leg. Okay, let me see. The hair. <laughs> Some of these hairs, you, hair colors you can't really see against the background. This looks like kind of a big blob. There, that looks kind of uh, elfy. Elf elfish? <laughs> Elvin? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Let's see. Go ahead and change up his ponto. Oh, what happened there? He looks like he had an accident. Keep moving. Uh, that looks kind of cool. All right. Keep that. Let's quit messing with him. I think he looks good. All right. That's one more character added to the party. So we got a yeah, and see his uh, that elf, his AC is a little bit better too. 
And so in this, in this one, this version of the rules, you want to have a low AC. <clears throat> Pretty much the opposite of the, of the new game. All right, let's see what else we can. We need to create some other characters. So we've got a dwarf and an elf. How about Genome? You can ride around his snowmobile. Wonderful movie. <laughs> the snowmobile. You even know what I'm talking about? Probably not. Okay, so he can be a fighter, a thief, or a fighter thief. You know, I thought gnomes could do more than this. Eh, what do I want? Do I want a, a thief or a fighter thief? Sometimes just having a straight-up thief could be a little bit challenging, but let's go ahead and do that. And as a thief, he can't be lawful good. Well, that makes a certain amount of sense. You can be a great politician, but you can't be <laughs> lawful good. <laughs> uh, what do I want to make him? Lawful evil? There might be some... There might be some... Uh, problems with that. Probably don't want to go chaotic evil. You know, I don't remember if this game actually takes party alignment into consideration or not. It might be okay just to make him lawful evil. Why don't we just try to make him lawful evil and see what happens. <laughs> actually, I guess as a thief he wouldn't be lawful. Doesn't make much sense. Neutral good, neutral evil. Let's try that. Okay, now we definitely want to have a high dexterity on this guy. Let's see. Oh. There's a 17, Constitution 14, 15. That's a decent roll. Go ahead and keep him. Let's see about a name generator for a... Uh, for a... Uh, that's elf name generator. Where's the gnome? F. <laughs> oh, gnome. There's no gnome generator, name generator. Gnome name generator. There we go. Yeah, these are weird. Man rug? Tancer? Vorbus Kelrin? No, Kelrin sounds okay. Kelrin. Okay, I'm gonna go through this, try to get through this a little bit. <laughs> okay, I, I can work with that. Oh, well, you shouldn't have that kind of armor, though. Oh, well, it doesn't matter, I guess. Oh, but part of me says it does matter. <laughs> uh, can I modify him? Uh, no, 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 no. Keep that. Um, I don't know if I can... I might have to go through this again, I guess. Let's see. Exit out of that. Uh, that's okay. Make him a thief again. <clears throat> uh, what do we say? Neutral evil? Oh, I did like his rolls last time, though. I don't... 16 for dex. Six, 15! Strength 16, con 16. That's... I'm going to go ahead and go with this. Character name. Uh, I guess we probably can't use that. <laughs> cool, Kelrun again. Let's call him uh, Vasta. Doesn't really sound too know me to me, but I'm not feeling very creative. You know, one of my weaknesses, I'm never good at coming up with names. I have some friends always go to when asking for a name. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it is. This, this one always makes me laugh. Uh, <clears throat> I was, yeah, there we go. That's kind of what I had in mind for him. Uh, let's see, do we want to mess with this again? I guess we need to change up a little bit. See if we can make his hair white. Let's see, man. There we go. They did not really do very good. You know, I thought they would have changed it up a little bit more than this for the PC version. But I guess this will have to do. Now, how do I... It's like, how do I change that outside part of his leg? You know what I'm, what I'm saying there? Let's see, what's his weapons? You know, I swear sometimes this thing's just not working. I don't see any change at all there. Oh, I guess that's, uh, <laughs> duh. Looking at colors. Uh, 
let's see, exit. No, 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 keep changing. Parts, <laughs> weapons. <laughs> Jeez, Louise, I. You know, it's it's a good it's good to come back and play these older games sometimes because man, you you can honestly totally forget what it was actually like. And I had forgotten how clunky this interface is. So let's see what. Probably gonna see if I can find a dagger. I don't want him to have a dress. Is there no? What the heck is that? Oh, I guess that's the dagger he's kind of stabbing down with it. Okay. Keep. Exit. Color 2. Let's see what I can do there. Maybe there's a color 1 and a color 2. Yeah, there we go. Give him some striped pants. <laughs> it is I, Robin Hood. Yeah, that ought to... That ought to do it. Let's see. Exit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see if I can change that body up. Yeah, that should be distinctive enough. Okay, now we've got our thief. Volstein. Welcome to the party, Volstein. Okay, let's see. What else do we want? Got three more characters to go. It's probably about the time we made a half elf. Why not? Have a nice diverse crew. Uh, half elf female. Sure. Again, with all these different options, you get clerics, fighters, all kinds of hybrids. Really, in this game, you've really only got the cleric, fighter, magic user, and thief. Everything else is just some combination of those. Uh, she's probably awful good. Uh, da -da -da -da. Female names. Alu, 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 Siriandi. Let's see now. What does a cleric need? Wisdom. Oh, there's a. Damn, look at that. That's a hell of a good nice roll. Strain 17, Constitution 17, Charisma's a little low. <laughs> she won't. She's probably about a 5 or 6, but I'm going to keep her. I like her. Uh, character. Chandrill. Chandrill the half elf. <laughs> Probably going to want to change the head around. Let's see. Is that. That's kind of a. I guess that's a. I don't know. Is that female? <laughs> uh, that's. A, no. 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 <laughs> uh, there we go. That's perfect. Perfect. Let's change up the body. I saw some... Nah, not feeling that. Nope. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Perfect. Okay, this is our cleric. So again, with the uh, weapons. Let's see what we can do about the head first. What is going on with these hairdos? Eh. Kind of hard to find something that really fits. I don't understand some of these, but not a whole lot of options. I can't tell if that's. I guess this will work. We'll go with that. Keep weapon, and she's going to have a shield and a mace. Pretty sure I saw that as an option somewhere. Come on. There, that'll work. Okay, exit out of that part. Let's change up her uh, hair color. <clears throat> what color do we make her hair? I already forgot. <laughs> I think it's kind of a brunette, right? I guess that'll work. Let's make her shield a different color. That'll uh, stand out. I just really want something that'll stand out. So I can tell these characters are part, because that can actually be a be a thing. Let's change out the body too. Purple. Purple body. Now I didn't see no it must be shield. There we go. That's what I that's what I was looking for. Give 
but these are some pretty ugly shields. <laughs> oh, I guess that'll work. You know, I'll. Ah, sorry, but they got snuffles here. Ah, must be allergic to these colors. Okay, whew, man. This is kind of exhausting work, isn't it? All right. And now I we'll probably want a couple of magic users to round out the party. And we have halflings and humans left. Let's see, can a halfling be a... So the halfling cannot be a mage. So that rolls uh, him out, unfortunately. I'm pretty sure humans can. Let's make one of these male and the other one female. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Neutral evil... Chaotic good, chaotic neutral, chaotic evil. Eh, make this one a uh, lawful good. I don't think it probably doesn't make that big of a difference. Let's see if we can get that intelligence up to 18 or. Let's see, that's, that's not a terrible roll. Uh, that high dexterity means it's lower, a little bit better AC. Strength. I would prefer an 18 or a 17 intelligence, but you know, I don't want to be here all day. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, maybe I'll just call this character <coughs> Shane. <laughs> Shane, Shane, Shane. It's a human name, I'm told. Head, head. Yeah, that's... <laughs> uh, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. Like I say, I don't know why I'm even bothering with these portraits. You, you don't really look at them too much. Parts. Weapon. Uh, keep going. He will need the gown. There we go. Perfect. I like that. Looks good. Okay, that's... Oh, what the... <sighs> Wah! Good mom! There. Okay, keep! Yes, yes, keep, keep, keep. Okay, let's do the colors. Change his dress color. <laughs> what is that considered? Leg? Whoa, cool. So what is it? The white robes are the good robes, right? All right, keep that. Body. Okay. I guess we'll have a slightly uh, two-tone color system. Parts one. Body. Yeah, I hope I get... <laughs> I had to play this quite a bit to make up, to justify all this, uh... Oh, ah, you know what, screw it, we're just gonna keep this. <laughs> ah, Alright, let's make another mage quick. I wonder if I could make an elf. Surely an elf can be a... can be a mage, right? Yeah, yeah, there we go. Magic user. Let's make this one, uh... Chaotic good. Ah! I'm, I'm so good! <laughs> Keep this character. Well, let's see. We've got 15 strength. Very low constitution, low dex. Eh. Not feeling that. Intelligence too low. 16. 14. There's a 15 int and a 15 con. 18 dex. Yeah, that's going to be a pretty, pretty good character, I think. Okay, let's see what we can come up with there. Um, Malar malaria? <laughs> yeah, not such a good name. Uh, Nithroil. Nithroil? Usama. Those are terrible names. These sound like pharmaceuticals. Cilia? <laughs> Camilla? <laughs> ah, Camilla's okay, I suppose. Camilla. Ah, Camilla. <laughs> that's not what I asked. 
<laughs> every time. Every time I, I laugh at that one. Uh, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So much so much humor. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Well, there's not that many to choose from, really. I guess I'll have to have uh, Blonde Xena. Blonde Xena. Okay, parts, color one. Let's go through this routine uh, for the final time. Looking for a yellow blonde. There we go. Keep. Let's see. Body. Oh, that's the color. I need to get to the parts. Yes, parts weapon. Keep going till we get to the gowns. Yeah, I'll give her the I'll give her a dagger. This looks more like a dagger lady. Keep. <clears throat> I wish I could find one with longer hair, but I think that's probably about the best I'm gonna be able to do. <laughs> As uh, long as she doesn't have a, a beard. Okay, let's see about these colors again. Let's see, can I make... I can't even tell what that's changing. Let's see, leg. Uh, nope, 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 nope. Leg again, come on, we can do this. <laughs> we can do this. Ah, uh, okay. Exit. Color two. Let's change up that arm color. What in the hell? Looks like <laughs> a slice of pizza or something. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with these colors, man. How do I change up the big color? There we go. <laughs> the big color. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not very <laughs> coherent today. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's not going to win any awards. Ah! Okay, try this. <laughs> okay, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There. Keep. Exit. Exit. <laughs> Yes, let's just take it. I know she's got green sleeves, but that'll work. Okay, Shane, get your buttonous butter. Camilla. All right, looking uh, good here. And I like the fact that my mage has that, or the half elf has such a low AC, that's going to come in handy because the mages won't have armor. Okay, let's go ahead and save the game. And let's get into this. I'm not sure how long we've been playing, but here we go. You have entered the monster crawling slums of Flan. Small, ugly things scurry from beneath your feet. In the distance, an alarm sounds. Well, go ahead and look. Doesn't tell me where I come into this place at. Huh. Let's see. Just give me the coordinates. 14.5. 14.5. Okay, so there's nothing here. <laughs> so I just, there we go. Here we go. Here's our first battle. You're surprised by goblins. Nice little animation there. Looks, looks pretty good. Well, this is going really quick. Okay, and that's <laughs> down to four hit points, and she's completely surrounded. <laughs> Ain't that just great? Oh, Lord, how's this supposed to work? Ah, uh, sure. Aim, previous manual center. Okay. How do I attack? Let's see, aim. Let's 
center. Next. Uh, yes, attack. <laughs> attack. Uh, I wonder if I can't use the bow since I'm... And I think if I try to move away from these folks, I'm screwed. Not with that weapon. Oh, man. He is double screwed then. Uh, well, let's see. I guess I can... I guess I can just attack with my hand. <laughs> let's see. There's got to be some way to... I don't... Surely I can use the bow. Use... Uh... Exit. Aim. Aim. How do I <laughs> attack? <laughs> oh God. Okay. Let's see. Hinter's not doing it. Um, no, I don't want to hit my own people. The only thing I can figure is that since the I'm in melee range. I can't use the bow. That is unfortunate. Okay, well, just see if we can attack with our bare hands. Miss. Oh, he's down. <laughs> Let's try this guy. Next. All right, target. Two points of damage. That said, it was very quick. Yeah, this is super clunky interface. <laughs> yeah, I didn't remember it being this clunky, so this is very instructive. <laughs> and I don't know if that guy's unconscious down there. How did I end up with this icon for Ufgar? Jesus. <laughs> There's got to be some way I can change that. That's going to bug me if I have to play that way the, the whole game. Uh, easier just to do it manually. What is this too too far away? I guess. Okay, move in. What? Aim manual. Long sword. Yeah, miss, miss, miss. That I remember. It'd be nice if it would just automatically stay on the same target. At least they're missing too. Let's see if I can move him around. Get behind that guy. Unfortunately, I think he's out of moves. How did he get a short sword? I thought I could have sworn I bought him a long sword. You can't attack diagonally though. Okay, can I get up in that corner? Yes, I can. Okay, so let's see. What can I do to this? Is there some way I can help this guy? <laughs> Use. No, I thought there was like a bandage option. Yeah, there we go. Bandage. So he is bandaged. Guard. Quit. Continue battle. No. Party has won. Each character receives 12 experience points. Let's see what we got here. Share the gold, take items. So we could just take everything, go back to town and sell it all. Probably won't be worth the trouble. Short swords, studded leather armor. I will take a short sword though for our and a shield for our little buddy there. Yeah, I think that was him, right? 
No. Let's see, items. Well, let's see, I guess I could just take another one. Uh, they don't have any more shields, though. Trade with Mithanar. No, not the gold. Items. Trade. Oh, God, what? This interface is painful. <laughs> Just painful. Okay. Exit. Myth in our view. So I guess I want to have that short and shield, short sword and shield ready to go. All right, let's... You want to go back and claim your treasure, yeah. I guess we could take everything then. Overloaded. All right, we got to get back to the <laughs> back to that inn <laughs> and heal up. Oh no, crap! Seedy looking kobolds. Oh, it's tempting. Let's see if we can flee. We need to get out of here. Oh no, they're back. <laughs> flee. Oh, battle begins. Oh, great. You know what? Let's go ahead and just go all out here. We'll do the sleep spell. Let's cast it back there. Alright, this just got a lot easier. Let's see. Mace. I'm pretty sure her bless only works on one party member. Now I think when they're asleep they just automatically die when you hit them. Boom. See what difference magic makes? Boom. Just, just like that. <laughs> Alright, we're done. See done. You have to say guarding. Guarding is if some if a monster comes up to you, you can hit them when they get close enough. It's pretty cool. Otherwise, you just have to quit your turn. Okay, come on. <laughs> done guarding. Are there more? No. Six experience points. Let's go ahead and look at this treasure. Share the gold. Take the item. All they had was one crummy short sword. Okay. Whew. Let's get back to that inn and rest up a little bit. So this time I'll be a little more careful how we go. This way. All right. All the way down, and there's our inn. Yes, Ufgar will gladly pay. Now, there's a question. I wonder if I have to select the spells every time. And I'm pretty sure, too, I have to actually cast those healing spells every time. I don't think that's automatic. So this might actually take a while. I have to keep casting, resting, rememorizing. Because I don't think you get any. We'll see, but I don't think you actually heal up when you rest. Yeah, see, that didn't do anything, so we <laughs> gotta go through that again. Cast. And it's not a very good spell, is it? Okay, let's just... No, really, I probably should just uh, do nothing but the Cure Light Wounds, because that's gonna be... <laughs> that's gonna be her main thing. Alright, so rest. Yes. Cast, cast, boom. All right, so everybody's back up. Just get that extra cure light wounds. 
Exit. Exit. Yes. <laughs> Rest. <laughs> Ooh, yes, guys. I did, just completely didn't forgot all about how how tedious some of this gets. Now they did fix a lot of this stuff uh, for the next game. What was this? Was this a tavern? That's another inn. I need to sell some of my loot before I go back. I wonder if I can sell it here at this at this place. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I can just sell the stuff here. That's nice. So one coin, two coin. <laughs> so really not worth dragging all that stuff around, is it? I wonder if it was a magic item, if it would be suddenly like 30 gold. <laughs> a few items. Yeah, it's got a long sword. I, that's worth nothing. Okay, a few items. Uh, long sword. Exit. You know what else I forgot to do? I forgot to save it <laughs> when I was resting, but ah, screw it. I, I don't know how long I've been working here. Now, let me, let me, let's go back into the slums one more time, do some more battles, and then we'll call it a day. Just having some good, clean fun. <laughs> That's all we're doing here. That was some message. All right, let's get back in here. Maybe this time we'll fare a little bit better. I guess I can save it here. Nice. Oh, good. I can. I can't alter those icons. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, so that one's correct. Was it the pick that was messed up? Oh, I'll see. This is good. So we can just turn those portraits off. Doesn't really make any difference here, but on the Commodore 64, that actually would take a long time to load in. Yeah, so you can just turn that off. That's fine. Well, one of these icons was messed up, though. Not that one. Which one was it? Yeah, she's good. Yeah, which one? One of them was messed up, right? Yeah, that's our... Was it Volston's? No, he's good. Man, is, am, I, am I just losing my marbles here? I thought one of them was... Uh, okay, maybe I am <laughs> slowly going insane. We can change the speed there. Let's slow her down a little bit. Let's try that so I can at least see the, uh, uh, so I can at least see what's going on. Uh, don't exit. This one does too, if you notice, it's got several save slots. Which I don't remember if the Commodore version had that or not. I think it might have just been one, one save and that was it. Now something else is kind of cool here. I don't want to spoil it for you, but there are secret areas in this. Uh, in the slum, so you can use the map to try to figure out where those are. Alright, so let's just look around. I think there's just a certain number of attacks. A certain number of random encounters you need to battle through. Uh, here comes the goblins again. Now somewhere here there's a nasty fight with some, uh, damn! Now let's just go ahead and do our little secret... secret weapon. Now the trouble is, I might actually put my own people to sleep. Let's just put it on him. So that took care of two of them. Helpless. That's the way I like my goblins. <laughs> With one cruel blow. Still, it's still going a little too fast for me to, to read, but uh, okay. So wow, he's down to two hit points. I don't think there's much I can do about it. This 
other than just to try to kill these things as quick as I can. You know, since he is down so low, maybe I'll just focus on the one that's not helpless. There we go. So he should be safe. This guy, once again, can't use his bow. I guess if I want him to ever be able to use that bow, I'll have to put him a little bit after the cleric and thief. Just sad, isn't it? <laughs> Boom. So he wants the damage. He's down. All right, and then we've got our warrior. That's weird ways. <laughs> that just doesn't look. That doesn't look right. Uh, now we don't need to continue the battle. All right, let's see what we got. Share the gold. Studded leather again. Yeah, I don't see anything that looks special there. So let's just leave the gold. It makes you feel bad about it. Do you want to go back and claim your treasure? No. All right, so we're going to have to use one of our spells. Try to get this rogue back, back up a little bit. Oh man, I have to waste two of them on him. Okay, exit out of that. Let me just change up the order a little bit here. Uh, party order select. Oh, I don't want to do that. Oh, let's see. This is the guy. Um, what? Uh, order. <laughs> Mythanar, okay. Put him there. Exit. And let's move him down there. Okay, so we got the warrior, the cleric, the thief, then my guy I'm trying to use as a ranger. So maybe he'll actually get to use the damn bow this time. Okay. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> He's kind of exploring. It's a big room. I guess there's nothing in here. I could search. There we go. What's this? Surprised a party of kobolds. Oh, I surprised them. This is always good. Means I can attack first. Let's see what we're dealing with here. Yeah, four cobalts, hit points three. I don't think I'm going to waste a spell. We'll see how it goes. Oh, yes, finally. <laughs> okay, ready the longbow. Aim. Manual. I missed! You know, you just got to get used to that. Don't. Don't. Oh, crap. We've got to attack an opportunity on him. Man, everybody's missing. Maybe I should use the spell. Fine. Alright, that helped. Let's go ahead and cast that... Uh, Ah, don't need a bless. All right, let's just see if she can. He's down. The rest of this will be a uh, simple. <laughs> uh, let's see, that one's helpless. They never miss if they're asleep. Let's see, can I move him? That's helpless one there, right? Yeah. Right, maybe you can hit one that's asleep. <laughs> yeah, one cruel blow. All right, done and done. Continue battle? Nope. Share the gold. Let's take a look at the items. Nothing but a short sword. Okay, let's just see if we can camp here. We'll probably get interrupted, but uh, eh, I'm not banged up too bad. You know, I think I might have to put that speed back on to maximum. <laughs> okay, rest. Increase. That's a pretty sophisticated timer there, isn't it? 
All right, I did not get interrupted. Cast my spell on the rogue. And he's going to take two. Yep. Okay. Memorize them again. Boom. Boom. Yes. Rest. Okay, we should be good to go. Let's see. Save again. And let's go ahead and make it fast again. Oh, wait, the uh, crap. I forgot about these guys. They use their spells as well. Memorize that sleep spell, man. That's been my that's been my savior. So you have two magic users. That's two two uh, sleeps. All right, back at it. Kind of lost track of where we are. I don't want to get too far away from the exit which is uh, on the western side. Let's make our way back to that. Oh, here we go. More goblins. So really, this is, uh, you know, this is basically the game here. Uh, we would want to keep doing this and doing this until we uh, got these guys to about level two or three, and then we could get to some of the monster battles in this uh uh, in the slums, and that's a good, you know, several hours of gameplay. Wow, these are, these have an AC of 6 and hit points of 4. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put them to sleep. <laughs> it's a great spell, it really is. I'll start at the back. So I think sometimes you can accidentally send your own guys to sleep. I think I'm remembering that happening. And doo -doo. Oh, I guess he's too far away. So you have to move before you attack. Once you attack, you can't move. Come on, Sean Drill. All right, Shane, what can you do? Hitting them with the darts. This is why I love darts, <laughs> this game. <laughs> I thought he would be a little bit better shot with his bow. What happened there? It's like he got two attacks or something. Hey, I'll take it. So we got through this one without even taking a taking any damage. That's that's awesome. Yeah, so it is, I'm starting to get the hang of the controls again. Things are uh, speeding up. Why am I not? Am I not done with the battle? Oh, <laughs> yeah, let's wait for him to wake up. That'd be smart. So they can't guard unless they have a melee weapon. That's what that's about. Not sure of the gold. Probably don't even need to be looking at this anymore. Nope. Exit. All right, let's just take a look at some of these characters. So I think the experience points would light up a different color if it was high enough to level, but let's just just to be on the safe side, let's see if we can get the chart. Yeah, so for level two, you need to have uh, at least 1,200 points of experience, and that's on the thief, which is the lowest. The rest of these folks need like 25, <laughs> 2,000 to 2,500, <laughs> uh, 1,500 for the cleric. So as you can see, that's going to take quite a while. Uh, going to take a long time. Uh, before you're ready to level. So we got quite a bit of grinding. Locked. Where am I? There's a locked door. I don't remember that. Let's see, it's to the west. 
Okay, well, I'll just, uh, let's try picking the lock. Which one's my thief? This one? Oh, I guess I... Hey, we broke our way in. <laughs> I'm going to save it. Something special here if we had to break in. It's to the door to the west. Huh, I don't know what's in here. Kind of nervous. I don't see anything. Another locked door. Room is dirty and has a strong and unpleasant odor. <laughs> How do we find your bedroom? I still don't see anything in here. Hey, what's this? A ragged old woman. She greets you. Welcome. For the price of a few coppers, I will tell your future. <laughs> Attack. <laughs> Leave. Pay. Why not? The woman's hands make mystic messages while she mutters some words. Her voice undergoes a strange transformation. Blood and violence are writ boldly in your future. Look for friends where you expect enemies, and enemies where you expect allies. The telling is finished. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> Attack! <laughs> uh, you leave. All right. So what's with all the security here? Let's see, where are we? Three and four. So we're kind of up in the corner. Let's go ahead and see if uh, old Valston could pick a lock. It'd be nice, Valston. Can't. Oh, what is this guy? A large orc raises his head and snarls. How dare you break into our home? A battle begins. <laughs> oh, 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 no. <laughs> I think this is going to be the end. Maybe not. Maybe we'll be able to put a lot of these to sleep. But uh, I'm thinking we're... Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we're going to make it out of this one. Matter of fact, I'd be surprised if we even uh, survive this battle. Or survive a round. Yeah, that longbow, it's just like two attacks. That's pretty cool. All right, Chandrillas. Misses. Only hope is maybe this... Maybe this uh, sleep spell will knock most of them to sleep. That helped. I don't think it's going to be enough. At least they can't all attack me at once. Okay, let's see. There he, he's about to get into it. You know, the ones that are helpless, I might not want to attack them. I might use them for as a buffer. Missed. So here's where the tactics and the strategy really start to come in handy. And I really wish he wouldn't keep missing. <laughs> I really wish that. Oh no. Well, at least when they use their bow, it looks like I can attack them. Yep. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Goodbye, cruel world. <laughs> oh, don't miss. Come on. Please hit. Uh, let's see. Do I have anything else? Like, I don't know if this cure light wounds will work on a somebody that's unconscious. We'll try it. Did that bring him back? <clears throat> no. Nope. Alright, we're going to ready the dagger now. <laughs> miss! And they don't miss. Well, come on. I'm going to take out one of them. You know, I wonder if we could flee. Move, aim. Uh, I guess we could try to run, but... 
I don't know if that means I'm going to leave my little partner behind. <laughs> He's down anyway. <laughs> Let's just see what happens. Let's try to get out of here. We're definitely going to die if we can't escape. She's in the clear, at least. Or he is. <laughs> Shame. <laughs> Done. Delay. Exit. Done. Quit. Oh. Let's buzz. Can he get away? And what's going to happen if I do get away? No. <laughs> The end! The monsters rejoice, for the party has been destroyed. Alright, so I did meet an untimely end there, but uh, that was, you know, I did have it saved. I could go back, reload, just maybe not go into a room uh, filled with orcs or hot <laughs> goblins with bows right away. You know, I'm thinking I'd probably want to be level uh, 2, if not 3, to deal with that. Anyway, there you go. That's a pretty good sampling, I think, of a pool of radiance. One of the great things about this game, though, the huge map so many different zones everything looks very different it's got that sort of uh feel to it um makes it very addictive uh, it is a, a game very much with the delayed gratification <laughs> you're gonna be playing for a long time uh before you're going to be walking through these uh, monsters with impunity um a lot of grinding but i think it's well worth it uh, i do have to admit i this interface needs an overhaul I think there might be some uh, enhanced editions floating around. I, I looked at one that was like the uh, go the Gold Box Companion program, something like that, a while back. I didn't want to use it for this video, but uh, there are ways, basically, to modernize this uh, setup a little bit. But anyway, it's it's pool of radiance for God's sake. You kind of want to. Uh, <laughs> it's like a proving ground uh, for serious CRPG fans. You want to beat this game uh, without. I'm not going to say without the clue book, because the clue book actually does make it a lot more fun. Uh, you don't necessarily want to uh, look at all the secrets in the clue book, uh, but the maps are very handy, just to kind of help you get around. And there's a lot of good information in there about putting a party together and, and all this stuff. Just a lot of fun to read, well written. Uh, anyway, that's going to do it. I'm not going to actually beat this game <laughs> today. I think it would probably take several weeks, if not months. I don't really remember how long it took me to, to beat this, but... Anyway, hopefully uh, you enjoyed this. You can get the game on GOG. Uh, you can play through this. Take, and once you're done with this, you carry your characters over to uh, the next game, Curse of the Azure Bonds, Secret of the Silver Blades, and uh, Pools of Darkness. It's the only one I haven't ever beaten. Uh, and I'll stop it here. I kind of want to play some more. <laughs> Always a good sign. But anyway, uh, let's get on. That's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, should be back next week with, uh, well, hopefully next week. We'll see. Uh, quite a few things in the pipeline. I've gotten some requests. Uh, I actually put a little thing on Facebook asking, you know, the game that you fell in love with. What was the your favorite game that sort of moved you from that casual game gamer into somebody that watches Matt Chat <laughs> all these years later? <laughs> what was your drug of choice back in the day? Uh, so I've collected some of those, and... Uh, some of them are really interesting. You know, it's just stuff like I remember there was a guy that said he liked the uh, it was the Dark Heart of Urkel, Urquell, however, however the heck you say that. And I, I thought that was pretty fun. I haven't really played that game I, uh, a lot, so I want I might look at that next time uh, just for something different. Of course, a lot of uh, good interviews in the pipeline as well. Hopefully, yes, we will have Cleve Blakemore, the man himself, <laughs> on Mad Chat. We've kind of been going back and forth, but hopefully. That will soon become a reality. Anyway, I want to... Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very, very, very much for supporting Matt Chat after all these years. Can you believe it's been 10 freaking years, guys? I just can't believe it. <laughs> and I couldn't have done it at all without you and your support of the show. Uh, if you want to support the show, you can go to the uh, link in the show notes to the Patreon site. You can go to uh, mattchat.us. Uh, you can tell people about the show. You can share it with uh, people. And, you know, that makes a bigger difference than you'd think. 
I mean, if you know somebody that really likes Pool of Radiance or likes role-playing game history, <laughs> that sort of thing, you know, it doesn't hurt to just send a link. Uh, tell them about Match It, you know, and they might become a fan and tell somebody that they know that you don't know. It's a nice little thing we call the, the social network. But anyway, whatever you uh, guys do to support the show and gals, uh, really, really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you uh, very much for that. All right, so what about the news from the Matt Cave? <laughs> I got some big news, and one of the reasons you haven't seen me, I haven't been putting out episodes, is I've been working on Dungeons and Desktops 2.0, and I don't have a copy of the old book uh, handy here, it's over there. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, Shane and I have gone through that. We're not just, it's not just an update. We've added some new chapters, but I mean, totally reworked it. I mean, put so much stuff in there, new things, uh, things from all the interviews I've done with the designers, uh, I mean, it's just, it's going to have full color screenshots, it's going to look beautiful, it's going to be <laughs> amazing. As so if you like the original, I think this one is a whole other, you know, it's basically like, I was I wanted to call it actually Advanced Dungeons and Desktops, but they wouldn't let me get away with that. Uh, but I really do think it's it's a big step. It's, a, it's definitely not just the same book with some new, uh, you know, changed up just a little bit. I mean, this thing is a, it's practically a new book at this point. Uh, so I've, we've been, you know, we've written it, we've proofread it. Uh, as far as I know, everything's on track at the publishers. They're looking at a street date of May 12th, 2019 on that. And they, they have the Amazon page set up so you can pre-order this. And I'm really hoping that, I know a lot of you guys want the signed copies and everything like that, but, but if you can do the pre-order, it's really great for me because that way there's a big spike, you know, when it hits the press, uh, when it hits Amazon. And it might even... Uh, get on uh, one of Amazon's bestseller, not like the big bestseller list, okay, uh, but at least in the category uh, that it's in, it might get to, on the bestseller list there. And who knows, you know, maybe this thing is finally the book that <laughs> will put uh, yours truly on the map because it's really been kind of sad, uh, these other books. You just, uh, you know, a lot of people tell me they love them and everything, but they just, you know, the numbers aren't there. Uh, to really impress the uh, the publisher. So anyway, I'm not going to bore you guys with all that, but if you want the book, please consider just pre-ordering it from Amazon. Help me get on that list, and uh, who knows? You know? <laughs> I won't forget you uh, when I'm rich and famous, right? Uh, okay, what else is in the news? Uh, this is from David Beatty of Mega Wars fame. Uh, <laughs> Mega Wars fame. Met him on the show not, it feels like yesterday, probably months ago, I don't know, years ago probably. Uh, but anyway, he wrote in about Guild Wars 2 developer. Uh, Guild Wars 2 developer is named ArenaNet. And sadly, they have been doing massive layoffs. Really scary stuff. And they've got a quote here from Song Gi Yoon, uh, the CEO of Korean publisher NCSoft. Uh, and with a quote, she says, Our live game business revenue is declining as our franchises age. Delays in development on PC and mobile have created further drains against our projects while operating costs in the West have increased. It is not sustainable. Uh, so that doesn't sound too good if you're a fan of Guild Wars 2. And I have to admit, it's been a long time. I played it when it came out for a while. You know, it was, it was a good game. It wasn't enough to, you know, I've only got, I feel like a lot of uh, people probably like me. We only have enough room in our lives for one MMORPG. It's kind of, I mean, I do know some crazy people that play like two or three regularly, but man, <laughs> man. Uh, you know, it's kind of a choice for me between that and World of Warcraft, and I'm kind of leaning a little bit more towards the <laughs> World of Warcraft. But, but anyway, I, I did like what I saw with uh, Guild Wars 2. Uh, anyway, if you, if that does concern you, maybe you should re, uh, renew your account or start spending some money on there, because <laughs> it doesn't sound too good, I'm sad to say. And then uh, Shane wrote in with this, and this is just fantastic stuff. I mean, this is just beautiful, beautiful story. A man finds his 35-year-old computer with the games he saved when he was a kid. And so there's a bunch of pictures there of his Apple IIe. So I guess he just goes up into the attic at his parents' place. His father has passed away a year ago. Finds that they've kept his old computer there. Everything's intact. And the cool thing was he's actually able to load up his games and the saved games uh, from when he was a kid. 
I mean, talk about a total, uh, you know, I mean, this is beyond nostalgia. This is, <laughs> you know, I can't imagine this. I've got a dream before. Wouldn't it be cool if I could find, like, the uh, all the discs I had from my Amiga computer and all the little songs I used to make with the Sonics and all that? That'd be really cool. So, I mean, I'm really, this is this guy's kind of living the fantasy uh, came true for him. Uh, but the, really, the, the sweetest part of this is that he found a letter that his dad had written him uh, back when he was at summer camp. I guess he typed it into the computer. Uh, but is he even able to read this letter from his dad? It, it kind of gets you a little teared up, I guess, reading it, you know, thinking about his dad passing away. And Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Just go, just go read it. Uh, I really think you'll enjoy it. Uh, thanks a lot, Shane, uh, for sending that. And then just a couple of little things I noticed uh, on the news. Uh, Sam Byford for The Verge. Uh, he's got a really good post up. It's l nice and lengthy. But it's basically asking the question of, when did cutscenes start looking worse than the actual video game? And it makes a pretty good point. I've noticed this myself. It's, it's really to the point now. I mean, back in the day, you would uh, play the, the gameplay itself would look pretty crude and blocky, you know, abstract looking compared to these cutscenes, which were, of course, professionally rendered on a, a workstation. What was that? Like the SGI workstations or blanket on the name. Or, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, just the cutscenes would look amazing, and you'd be thinking, man, I wish the whole game looked that awesome. And then it got kind of the point where they were basically the same, right? Uh, but now it's, it's, he's right. He says, uh, now they're delivered as compressed. He's talking about this Anthem game. He says, the cutscenes are delivered as compressed, low-resolution video files that run at a slower frame rate. It's incredibly jarring to see crisp 1440p gameplay with pristine effects then feel, feel like you've been dragged to watch a Starship Troopers trailer from Apple's QuickTime website in 2003. And so anyway, he goes on. He's a good writer. It's a, there's a lot of fun stuff in this article. So I take a look at that, and i also like to hear your thoughts on this. And then uh, finally, Michael Ruiz, Ruiz of uh, Dual Shockers. He's also got a nice uh, piece of I love these uh, nice, long sort of essays. <laughs> you know, call me old-fashioned. I kind of like to read. Uh, but anyway, his, what his question is, something I've often wondered, uh, why are video game movies so bad? It's a kind of a provocative question. Uh, is it that video game stories are too simple? Is it the fact that movies have to be only two or three hours long? You know, these games have hundreds of hours to develop. You know, what's up with that? And he says that he kind of compares it to comic books. He says, you know, comic book movies based on comic books are really good now. You know, some of them have even won all these Oscars and other Academy Awards and all this. Uh, so why has there been this really... Actually, I like what he says here. He says, one day we will get the Spider-Man 2 of video game movies. And we can finally move on from this uh, silly conversation. Yeah, so everybody always talks about that uh, Mario Brothers movie. Uh, the Resident Evil uh, movies. You know, a lot of them are terrible. You know, I think that the... You know, maybe... It's nostalgia talking, but I seem to remember the liking the Mortal Kombat movie. You know, when that came out, I didn't think that was it wasn't like <laughs> Citizen Kane, okay? Uh, but I don't remember it being super terrible. Uh, anyway, what about that ale of the week? Well, obviously, I didn't want to get just any old ale for the tenth year anniversary special. Uh, let me tell you guys, I, I went up and down. We got a a liquor store here called West Side Liquor. This this thing is like a mall. It's like a it's like a big uh, huge warehouse full. And I mean they got all the uh, liquor and stuff which I don't care about. Uh, but they have a nice uh, really nice ale selection. You never know what you're going to find there. And I was turning the place upside down trying to find something with a rat theme. It's kind of my shtick, but you know I <laughs> I don't know if it, if it doesn't exist. Uh, maybe one of you guys uh, that are into the microbrewing should, should get on that. You know, we really need like a rat slayer ale. You know? uh, don't make me do it because... <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, anyway, uh, this is what I did find. This is a, one of my favorite Belgian ales. Is the, I don't know how to pronounce this. It looks like pirate to me, uh, but there's a couple extra A's and there's no E on the end, so it's like pirate. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to call it pirate. You know, I think that's probably... A, the way I prefer, uh, but I've had the Pirate before, Pirate Ale, from Belgium, obviously. Uh, but this one's interesting because it's a special reserve, and it's uh, the Pirate Ale aged in rum barrels. So kind of double, du doubling down on the Pirate theme. we got the Pirate <laughs> Ale uh, brewed in a 
uh, a rum, uh, yeah, rum barrel. So that should be interesting. Let's see, brewed and bottled by something I can't pronounce in Ertveld, Belgium. Imported by, went it to Global, just seeing if they have any information here. Not really seeing anything about the, you know, about what kind of hops are used or anything. Uh, it does have the alcohol by volume here. It says 10.5%. Uh, so definitely not something you would want to chug or drink this whole bottle. Um, but anyway, it looks really good. And what's even better is they've got the nice little cork on there that I can use to try to damage my camera and put it in once and <laughs> once and for all to match it. So let's see, maybe, maybe since it is the 10th year anniversary of the show, I'll actually be able to hit you know, playing Pool of Radiance where I can't seem to hit anything ever is probably not the <laughs> not the best game to play when you're trying to build up your confidence that you'll actually be able to destroy your camera with a well-aimed cork. Okay, I'm going to loosen her up a little bit. And we'll see what happens. What is my Thacko? What is your Thacko with the... With, there we go. <laughs> with this cork. Okay, maybe I should put a, maybe I should cast a sleep spell on the camera. Some of you guys probably are asleep at this point. <laughs> I get that sometimes. People are like, oh, I, I like to put match hat on when I'm in bed. It kind of helps me to get to fall asleep. Like, thank you. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, come on, aim. Fire! Well, I, I did hit the stand. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, we got pirate coming out. Get some of this into the glass. Wow. Whew. This is just ready. Ready to get all over the place. Okay, anyway, let me clean up a little bit and then we'll <laughs> see what that's all about. Wow, that was uh, <laughs> uh that was exciting. Ooh, I didn't expect the ale to come foaming at the mouth. Wow. Just smells really, really good. You can definitely smell the rum. Uh, that sort of uh, cherry. It always smells like cherries to me. You know, like it just smells really, really sweet even out of the bottle. Of course, uh, for a true test, we have to put it into this rather excellent drinking horn. Okay, let's put her down. All right. Well, you can definitely smell the alcohol in this one. Uh, like I say, very cherry, a little bit of a smoky. It's a little bit of smokiness, but really it's just that cherry. Uh, there's something else in there. You know, if I didn't know better, I'd say this was had a little bit of that sour. Uh, however the hell you say that. The, <laughs> the bread myosin Just a, a little whiff, maybe. Yeah, but really all I'm... I mean, 99% of this aroma is just that really sweet cherry. A little bit of a, I guess a little bit of a, a rum. Maybe like, remember those little rum cherries? Little chocolatey uh, rum cherries? It smells like if you had a handful of those, you, you know, you're smelling them up close. It's kind of what it smells like. Well, anyway, let's give it a taste. And Shane uh, Stax claims that he can tell what I'm going to give a beer. Just based on the words I use to describe it and the facial expressions I make. And I don't know what his batting average is on that, but... <laughs> <laughs> it kind of made me hyper-conscious about it. I'll see, if, I'll see if I can throw him off a little bit. Anyway, let's give this a taste. <laughs> <clears throat> wow, there's a lot going on there. Holy cow. Uh, definitely packs a punch. I mean, not unusual, not, not surprising. It is the 10.5... Uh, uh, alcohol there. Uh, you sort of taste the rum flavor, like a fizzy, like a fizzy rum, uh, almost like a rum and coke, or like a rum and uh, you know seltzer water kind of vibe to it. And uh, then you do taste that Belgian ale on the back end. And if you haven't ever tasted one of those, I mean, you're really <laughs> you're really missing out. Uh, to me, they're very light, sweet, kind of peachy uh, flavor, a little citrusy. Now let me try it again. Yeah, this is, you know, this is one that really uh, gets your attention. I actually kind of like, you know, the more I uh, drink this, I really like this, uh, that Belgian flavor mixed with the rum, uh, rum barrel aging process. Something about that, just really interesting. It, it almost tastes like two different beverages. 
but when you taste it, uh, it's just kind of weird. <laughs> I mean, there's two very different things going on. It's like a split personality. Uh, I'm going to try it one more time here, see if I can get somewhere with this. Uh. Yeah, it does kind of have that little bit of that sour taste to it. Um, kind of sweet going down, a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of honey-like flavor in that. Uh, really strong aromas, cr kind of creamy consistency. You know what the hell? I'm gonna have to go one more time. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like my palate doesn't know what to make of this. It's like woo, 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 woo. Uh, one more try, then I'll see if I can give this a ranking. Uh. Yeah, you know, I think this is probably, I'd probably say this one's more interesting, you know, just from a beer, a beer taster uh, perspective. It's, it's really fun, just the wild flavor changes that you get with this. Uh, it'd be a lot of fun to sit around with some guys that were interested in uh, ale and see if they, see what they come up with for this. It's uh, just super complex uh, flavors on it. Uh, but just in terms of uh, what I want to drink like <laughs> this every day, <laughs> you know, I'd probably lean more towards just the regular old uh, uh, pirate ale. It is one of my favorites. So, uh, the Belgian ales are so good already, uh, just plain. I don't know if I really need this, this, this sort of sophistication with, with a rum barrel. It's almost more distracting than it is uh, enjoyable. Uh, but anyway, it is really uh, tasty. It's, um, like I say, definitely interesting from that uh, beer connoisseur perspective, but probably not as, uh, I probably wouldn't, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of torturing Shane here. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go uh, four out of five drinking horns on this one. Uh, you know, if you really like love rum, uh, you might want to go five out of five on it, your personal uh, style. <laughs> uh, but for me, I'd probably rather just have a, a plain old pirate. Uh, so four out of five for the Special Reserve uh, Pirate Ale aged in a rum barrel. All right, so I thought for the quote of the week, the quote of the episode, I think this uh, pirate is starting to get to me already. Jeez. Uh, anyway, I have the Adventurer's Journal here. Uh, you know, I love this thing, and there's a. Uh, I thought it'd be fun to read one of the journal entries. It's kind of set up like a poem, uh, as the quote, kind of go along with the theme of the episode, if you will. Uh, so here's journal entry twelve. This is a message scratched into the wall over the pool. It goes something like this. Beware the power of the pool. Death to those unworthy of the gifts of the pool. Power to those who will use the gifts of the pool wisely. Bathe in the pool if you dare. <laughs> anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that and see you next time. again as long as I live, I swear it. But here's the problem. If you don't let me live, how can I prove my good faith to you? If you've hurt me, this ledge will remain steady as a rock. And that thing coming at me won't be what I think it is. If it is, there's no hard feelings, of course. But I'd be very disappointed.